Good morning, everybody. David with uh, OG Accountability again, sitting here. It's been a it's been a hot minute, man. It's been a minute. You've had a lot going on. Yes, I have. Uh, this is uh, Joe. Uh, it's, it's probably been a few months, man. It's been a couple months. Yeah, uh, we've we've had some. You've had some great things going on. Business completely taken fire and, and yep. taken off. Uh, just married a daughter. Uh, got one of your twins married off. Yes, and, I did. And uh, are they thinking about uh, kids soon? Or um, waiting? I don't think so. Uh, but you know, I don't know if I'm ready to be a papa just yet. Not, so is that what it's going to be? Is going to be papa or, or I, I don't care. Pop, whatever, whatever, whatever makes them happy. You know, as long as they come see me and you know, I get to play with them, I'm good. Golly, I can't even imagine being. A they're not even. They're not even. They're too focused right now. They're focused on their career, which, which is great because you know my daughter's husband's in law school uh, at South Texas. You know, she's. She's working for a for a firm downtown that funds large lawsuits. So she, so okay. right now, they're they're just they're getting started, and I don't think they want to complicate anything anymore with the way things are. Yeah, yeah. But but it would not surprise me if you know I'm a papa in a year or two. Yeah, what you, what you need to hopefully they uh, still remember how the birds and bees work and how babies come about. You know, if you, it, the thing is, if you don't do something about it, right. Inevitably it's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. Uh, just, we just did a wedding there and now your other daughter, does she work at the, she, she work at the, uh, was she working the front desk when I came? No, no, she, now, now when they're there, because they come there so often that they'll, they'll handle traffic as it comes in. If I'm teaching or if, okay. or if, if I'm dealing with other, other members, uh, they'll handle traffic for me and do things here or there, but no, they're not, uh, they have their own, they have their own job. They have their well, own vocation. I, I said hi to her, and then I realized I haven't seen her in probably yeah. So she yeah. didn't. She just kind of looked at me, and I'm like, never mind. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't want to do that. I know you're dead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, if and you see them now, I mean, they're they're grown women now. Yeah, I mean, and and the pic, the wedding was just, it was surreal. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and and try to try to, you know, put on a put on a fake. You know, tough guy. It was. Did you have to grab that handkerchief a couple times. It was uh, when we were sitting outside, um, and she was about to walk through, and I was holding her dress up for her, getting ready to walk down the aisle, and we were on the sidewalk, and it, everything was okay. But she kind of turned around, and smiled at me, and then uh, a buddy of mine walked up behind me with his wife, Chris Williams and Bianca Williams, and I turned around and I looked at him, and I looked back there, and Bianca's starting to tear up because Bianca's taking their senior pictures. They've they, and they've known the kids, you know, they've known the girls growing You're up. They're like, "Dang it, don't get me yeah, started." Like, Here it's we contagious. go. <laughs> so yeah, there was a moment you now that I was I was holding it back. That's for sure. Yeah. The uh, after doing so many weddings, officiating so many weddings, the majority of men that I ever watch lose it or or you know break down emotionally is normally the dad. Whenever you ask who gives this woman away. And then the dad's going to say her her mother and I, and that is normally where most people lose it. And I will tell you, when the dad loses it, everybody loses it. Right? It's 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 infectious. Mm -hmm. But uh, so yeah, man, you've had a lot of great things going on um, uh, since I seen you last. My dad's had a stroke, done a lot of traveling, um, had had some massive computer problems, had to spend quite a bit of money to get yep. just spent some money to get it fixed and. It didn't fix it, so it just ended up having to buy new. Isn't it funny how that happens? Yeah, crazy, right? It's I'm just, glad your dad's okay. I'm glad. Yeah, he's yeah, he's he's really. Matter of fact, he probably needs to slow down a little bit, mm -hmm. um, unless it's cardiologist cardiologist listening, and he is he's, he's going so slow and yeah, taking his time on everything, but doing everything he's supposed to do, and he's doing well. Cognizant cognizance is 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 really well. Uh, sometimes uh, him finding the words to explain what he's trying to say, mm -hmm. and that'll frustrate him a little bit. But it's getting better. Week by week, it's getting better. And, you know, you're just – the brain's a funny thing. Keep keep doing it. Yeah. Just keep doing it. He'll I mean, pick it back up. He's still up every morning, 7 o'clock in the morning. He's out on his tractor. He's mowing. He's out golfing. He, you know, he was out on the golf course yesterday. And, and of course, he went by himself. And I'm – I had I known, I would have tagged along. I don't like him out there by himself on the right. golf course. But, um, man, we were uh, kind of jumping off of, – bouncing off a little bit before we uh, started recording. And uh, – we were uh, talking about Liz was here earlier this week, mm -hmm. and, and uh, of course she says hello, and we'll get her back in here and get get the female perspective on okay. things. Uh, but we were talking about fear, uh, and good choice. It, it you know talking with a, a woman. There's there's 
polar opposites on what we're afraid of. Mm-hmm. And, and I think the hardest part for most people is they don't really ever, they really don't ever show what they're truly afraid of. They, you know, they mask it and that can be good in certain situations. Um, but I think, I think going into friendships, relationships, when you can truly understand what makes somebody tick and that is what makes them happy, what makes them mad, but also what they're afraid of. And, um, what that, that allows you to tread lightly and know what areas to avoid and certain things not to do. But, uh, when you think about fear, it, it's, it's different for every person. Mm -hmm. Every person has a different definition, but you know, what's something that, that you just look and you're like, this is what frightens me, scares me. And, 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 and more than just the, you know, car accident or, or things like that, but like true, truly deep rooted fear. Um, Honestly, um, I don't have much fear for anything happening, any type of incident or something happening to me, right? My fear now is passed on to my family. Yeah. You know, that's what I worry about. Something happening to Cyrus, Kaylee, Elise, Sheridan, Nicholas, you know, uh, Tia, you know, <laughs> couldn't imagine, right? I mean, that, that to me is, is my greatest fear is, is my losing my family. Yeah. Right. Something happening to my family. Um, me, not so much. You know, I, I do worry about what would happen to them if something happened to me. Yeah. Um, but that's that's something I fear. That, that that's what I fear now. If the, but what I don't want to do is I don't want to dwell or live in that fear. Yeah. Right. I, I don't want to do that. And it cripples you. It it absolutely does. It cripples you, and and it 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 inhibits your ability to make good decisions because you're making those decisions based on fear. OK, and if you have too much fear, then all you're doing is putting these overarching constraints to try to avoid something bad from happening. All right. And, and I, I now my old fear, now my old fear, that's something that I, that I can very much relate to and talk about. My old fear was fearing my past. That was big. Huge. I think that I think that hits that resonates with a lot of people. Yes, a lot of people actually. Fear of my past, being like, oh man, I, I, you know, I was such an asshole. I did so many wrong things to people, and I could never do this because people would say this about me, right? Especially stepping out into the public eye, yeah. which I've been over the past, you know, ten years. I've been doing a lot more of, um, but I had to get over that. I wasn't going to live in fear anymore. Yeah. You know, I was going to if. If people, people don't know me, you know, that, that would make those judgments now. So I don't really, I got over that and pushed through and I was, I'm better on the other side for it. That is, you know, and, and you said something, Joe, that this is my thought process. And I had this discussion actually with my 11 year old, about to be 12 year old daughter, uh, ran into somebody and I said, and she said, well, daddy, who's that? And I said, oh, that's my friend. And then I got in the car and was driving down the road, and I looked at her and I said, well, baby, that's not really a friend. Right. I haven't seen them in 22 years because I haven't seen them since I left high school. Oh, God, 23 years now. <laughs> uh, and you realize that I'm not your friend anymore. I'm just an acquaintance because I really don't know you. I've lived more life out of school than I did in. So if you still think that I'm that 17-, 18-year-old kid – you don't truly know me and I don't truly know you. Uh, you know, I and just, I'm not going to pass those judgments on to you. Who absolutely. You used to be. No. Yeah. And you know, we've all done stuff that we just look back and I will tell you going through my dysfunction and, and one of my biggest fears. And that is why, um, in a lot of areas I step back is I didn't want to embarrass anybody because of my funk. So man, I became a hermit. I just, I just locked myself away. Mm-hmm. But, but that is what fear does. When you allow fear to control you, it cripples you. It just keeps you from going anywhere, yes. be, becoming parts of anything. And I think I'm stagnant. It's very stagnant. Yeah. And men and women have such a different outtake on the dealings of certain things. Um, just just this past, uh, it's it's been about three or four weeks. I was dealing with a gentleman, uh, and I know he won't mind me talking about it, and I, I won't say his name, but uh, you know through the church and through our business, we, I mean, I've, I've worked and operated with hundreds, if not thousands of veterans and a gentleman called me and, uh, 
uh, went and met, was there face to face with him, and he began to open up and talk about some things that he's never talked about before. And one of one of the things people need to realize that is a fear that somebody that truly has a a damaged brain from war struggles with PTSD, struggles with depression, struggles with anxiety. That when they open up to talk, listen, mm-hmm. listen to what they say, especially when they never do. But he was putting a fear off to me that I didn't. It didn't register with me until I saw it in his eyes. So everything he's been struggling with, and he's an awesome man, but he wants to get a dog. Uh, he had an organization get a hold of him and said, hey, we have dogs we train, and, and one thing you need to know is when you get triggered, your body actually puts off a hormone and a pheromone that dog can smell, and that dog will come and lay on you and comfort you when you get, and he's all about it. And then that fear came out, and it was like the atmosphere in the room changed, and he just said, but David, and he leaned forward, he goes, but what if he dies? And I'm like, at first, you know, your first, you just want to say, well, yeah, you'll get another one or, you, you know, and then you realize I better choose my words really carefully here because he is really expressing like, cause he's experienced loss like that. He's experienced loss like that. And, and he's open and he's opened up and, 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 and I've not been in that situation. I think, but what he's saying is uh, the Bible talks about Nathan and David, Nathan and David were warriors and they went to war together. And the Bible says that they had a love for each other that surpassed the love of women. And, you know, somebody's like, well, that's homosexuality. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. And so what he was letting me see is that if I bring this this dog into my life, that, that's that's my that's my war buddy. That is somebody that, and but I'm not going to have him, but maybe eight to ten years, what am I going to do? Mm-hmm. And saw that fear, you know, that normally didn't see. I mean, this guy is Superman to me, but he's opening up and sharing his, his emotion. And... We all deal and, and fight different things differently, and our upbringing has a lot to do with with our fears. But the biggest part of fear is overcoming ourselves. I think, for at least for me, because I'm my own worst enemy in my head. Yeah, because our head is our head is is <laughs> our head is our worst enemy, right? As soon as if we don't get out of our head and our own thoughts, we we are going to come stagnant. We're not going to want to do anything. We're going to let fear take over. Um, you know. It, it, your friend, the, the one you're dealing with, I mean, that's that's exactly what it is. Is he's he is he's had those losses before, right? He's been close to people. I said um, I was reading something last night, and I thought to my like we're doing okay. So we're doing Veterans Night at uh, at Condition One. Okay, we do it every Friday uh, from six to eight p.m. with Veterans Entrepreneur, Entrepreneurs and Leaders of Vail. Okay, great organization. Um, they help veteran business owners and leaders in the community. We help vets, you know, uh, or Vail helps vets get started um, and kind of gives them the tools they need to become leaders in the business world and connecting veterans and things like that. It's a great organization. Um, But one of the things that I love about Veterans Night, okay, and it's starting to grow. We're starting to get a lot more people in. It's a lot of fun. That's awesome. Okay, yeah, it's it's awesome being back on the mats with these dudes. And it's like we're back at the barracks, you know. And I don't even know these guys. I I, I know them now. But I didn't serve with them. These aren't guys that I served with. And these are these are going to be from all branches. All branches. Okay. All branches. But what I love the most is we get in there and we start bullshitting and we start talking like we used to talk. And, and, and it's like we it's like we've known each other for ten years, right? And it reminds us why we were really over there doing what we were doing. It ain't about the red, white, and blue and freedom. And it, it, that's not what it's about. It's about that dude next to you. It's about that lady next to you. It's about those people that are over there with you. Okay. That's that's what you learn to care about the most. And that's what gets you through those times because they're going through it just like you are. Yeah. You know, and <sighs> that's what was so great for me was knowing that, that that's what we're getting back in. Yeah, and we're trying to keep them, we're trying to keep them from having to go out to the bars on Friday nights. You know, let's get together and do something yeah. productive. Let's get together and train. Let's get together, get on the mats and work. Uh, you just said something and I don't want to lose the topic, but you said train. So I was watching Chell the other day, and mm-hmm. he was reading some stuff. Less than 2% of the population of the whole world will ever do any advanced training for their protection. Isn't that crazy? That is nuts. It's crazy. That's insane. I, I just – our, 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 one of our most inherent, you know, uh, beliefs or something that's ingrained as us is our, is our self-defense, Right. 
And that alleviates some fears right there. Yes, it will. It, and, and, and make you very cognizant and, and be, be in control. Like one of the things, one of the very first things I remember us talking about is a lot of times I know some people that have put their kids into, into mixed martial arts and it's normally the mom will say, well, I'm, I'm just afraid it's going to make him violent. And like you said, it does the complete opposite. It does the opposite. It, I mean, there may be an anomaly here or there. Absolutely. You know what I mean? But, but a, I mean, that's like everything in life. There's a um, bad, there's a bad, always, in every bunch, everywhere. Um, yeah. I mean, look at Washington. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, one of my fears. Yeah. You know. Well, you, uh, oh, you just said something that is one of my fears. And like, so here's something that uh, a lot of people live in the here and now. Some of the things that are happening, one of my fears isn't for me, it's for my daughter and my grandkids. Yeah. What, what world are we leaving, leaving to them? That's why voting is important. Yeah. That's why. That's why we got to make sure our elections are are fair and just. And being a being a dad, and and like you said, my my fears don't necessarily resonate with me, but a lot with her. And uh, how many times during the day does our phones go off with this Amber Alert now? I know. I mean, all Daily. the and you know sometimes we just look past them, but then like you know I've said before, but well, if that was my kid, I would hope to God that everybody would look at it. And that's one of my fears is I have trained my daughter to not trust anybody. Mm -hmm. and, and what I mean by not trusting anybody is you can nod, talk to people, but if you don't know them, you keep your distance. 100%. You don't, I, you know, I, and because that is one of my fears. This is a perverted world we live in. Now, the United States is epicenter one for child abduction. Mm -hmm. And that that's one of my fears. So when she goes to places with her friends, and there's very few places she does go, I send her with people I trust. But, you know, I don't care if it's a man or woman. Where y'all going? Who's going to be there? Who are you going to be with? Are you taking a weapon? You know, well, no, I'm just going to drop them off. Uh, she's not going then. Yeah. You know, and I understand my parents, our parents drop us off and, you know, they drop us off the skating rink and show up 30 minutes after it closed, you know, right. we live in a different world. And one of the things that I, we hit with Liz, I have to make sure I don't pass those fears, make generational fears, you know, because fear can be passed down. If, 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 you know, I use the example, my mom's deathly afraid of storms and every time it stormed, well, just my daughter growing up around my mom, man, when it storms, she's deathly afraid. Right. And there's certain things we can pass and hand down. And there's things that we have to watch, especially raising our kids, right? Like my fear, it, like I said before, is something happening to my family. The bottom line, that, that's my greatest fear, 100%. Um, but we have to be cautious because now if I see Cyrus climbing on something or something, I don't, I don't want to be, I don't want to restrict him too much because I'm worried he's going to fall and, and break an arm, yeah. right? Because the second I start doing that, then I'm teaching him to fear everything. Yeah. Right. And I am act I am actually handicapping him for the rest of his life if I don't let him take risks. You know. Sometimes, sometimes the best learning tool is a little bit of pain. Yeah. I, <laughs> uh, you, you remember? So Peyton wrecked her motorcycle, got mm -hmm. burnt horrifically. Two weeks later, she's, you know, I've got to turn it down. And if her mother is watching this, I did turn it down. <laughs> you had to put, turn I mean, the governor down. She is flying. Well, she went from concrete to gravel to turn. Mm -hmm. You can't do that on a dirt nope. bike. Dude, she got it. Road rash, her whole side. And she came in, and I knew it was painful because I've had some. And she held it together. We have this little deal called a sick couch. So, like, whenever you're sick or hurt, get on the couch. We make you a little pallet, and we'll bring you food and if you need anything. So, put her on the couch, and I put some... You know, she was bleeding pretty bad, you know, was docking her up. And I finally just looked at her and I was like, baby, I know it hurts and it's okay to cry. Boy, <laughs> the second I gave that permission. Yeah. Whew. But now she's got a healthy fear, a healthy, her, it went from fear to respect. Right. Now she respects. That's, that's important. Yeah. Okay. Respect those actions. Respect what you're doing. You know, don't have to fear everything. And look, now there's a healthy dose. A healthy dose of fear is also good. Absolutely. Okay. Um, when you're overseas and you're in, you know, kinetic environments where, you know, there's chaos and there's violence and, you know, it, 
there's always a bit of fear. I don't, there is, okay? There, there just is. And that keeps you alert, right? It keeps you from being complacent. Yeah. You know, and, and because the first time you're complacent outside the wire somewhere, you're going to, you can get, you can get fucked up bad. Okay. It makes you think about everything you do. Yes. Right. And, and, and but one of the things that that fear did for me whenever I was overseas, um, was cause I was shit in the rear. <laughs> like when we were garrison, I was drunk, just partying. Hey, let's go to the bar. And you know, but when we were, when we were overseas, it was a little bit different because I didn't want to die. I didn't want my buddies to die, you know? So I did the best job I could for them. Yeah. Right. And I, and, and that was driven by fear. Right, a, a, a healthy dose of it. Yeah. Re- respecting, respecting something, and fearing something. I think are the same. Mm-hmm. Just respect is. I learned about that fear, mm-hmm. and now I know why I am afraid of it. Yeah, that, you know, I'm, like I went. I've gone skydiving four times, and I'm about to go again. I love skydiving. <laughs> it's it's. I remember jumping out of the plane. I get to the bottom first time. And that is when my adrenaline hit after I landed. And it's like, okay, I'm okay. You know, I'm good. Then the adrenaline hit, man, I'm walking off and this lady's, they're about to go. And she's like, well, how was it? I'm like, man, it was amazing. And she's sitting there with her boyfriend and she's like, well, that didn't tell me very much. And I turn around and said, when's the last time you fell for three miles? How do I, how do you explain that to somebody? And there's certain things that you go through that, you can't explain to anybody because when it is a really a reality fear to you, you can't truly explain to somebody sometimes why it is you're scared of it or why it is, you know, you just, you're going to have to experience it yourself because you may go. Yeah. You know, and that's different in everyone. There's no metric to measure that. No, you know, at all. Everybody has a different personality or has different, you know, different mannerisms, you know, that's something that can't be measured. People are going to react to it and respond to it in different ways. The, I'm, I'm very thankful that I have always been the, the calm person, you know, just there's a spider right there behind. If you want to kill him, see him next to the green sign. That's what happens when you live in the country. Yeah. I wouldn't know about that anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> can't yeah. wait to get there again. Though. Yeah. It you won't know, be I'm, long. I'm, I'm ready to get out of the yeah. concrete jungle, man. I really am. I, you know, I, I, I told you I go downtown a lot and yeah. I just sit there sometimes and listen to the sirens and stuff. And I'm like, what yeah. I get, I, I do it if I had to do it, but I don't have to do it. And I don't want to do it. That would be a fear of mine. A fear of mine. This, this is a fear of mine. My daughter's here with grandma I'm downtown and we have something crazy break loose and I can't get home and I'm stuck in that concrete jungle. Yep. That's a fear of mine. Yep. That is a huge fear of mine. 100%. You want, you want to know what, you want to know what one of my fears are? Spiders. So we deserve that shit. (laughs) No, No, I don't like spiders, man. Spiders don't, I I don't, I don't mind snakes. You know, I don't mind snakes. I don't mind reptiles. I don't mind, there's just something about spiders I don't like. Sure, we go. We'll go grab them. Come up. <laughs> we go to Cambodia. My first time in Cambodia. I've been in Cambodia less than 24 hours, and uh, we go out to Tia's parents' you know country home. Okay, and we get out there, and I go to go to the restroom, and I walk into the bathroom. The whole family's right outside eating, and there's 20 people at this long table. And I walk in there, and there's a freaking spider on the wall that big. And no. I'm like, dude, I'm not pissing with this spider in here looking at me like that. The last thing I want is him to jump down, bite me somewhere important, and now I'm really screwed. <laughs> you know? And they just, it's no big deal. Oh, no. they. I was like, hey, there's a spider in here. They came in, grabbed it like, you know, hey, picked it up, threw it in a jar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no. no. Not me. I don't do spiders. I'll do every, anything else, but not spiders. It uh I lose my my family. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the the only other fear like that I'm that petrifies me, really petrifies me, is open water. Really, to be let's just say I go on a fishing trip and the boats sink mm-hmm. and I am forty miles offshore because 
there's a lot of there's a lot of animals in that uh in that big blue drink that mm-hmm. can sense the electro electrical impulses your body's putting off, mm-hmm. and and they will eat you. They will eat you. They're yeah. not going to eat me because if uh-uh. I, if that's happened, I'm swimming down thirty feet and I'm going like this. <gasps> I'm not getting eaten alive. <laughs> did you see uh did you see the guy who got uh killed in Egypt? Shark attack. No tiger shark ate him in front of the people. They got it on film. Golly. Mm-hmm. Speaking of. Did you see the four kids that survived that plane crash? Yes, in, that the, in the jungle in the forty rainforest. days. Man. Forty days, no predators got to him. Yeah, that's that thirteen-year-old. He, he had some skills. He had some skills. He had some skills. Well, yeah, they come. They come from a, a an a, indigenous tribe, an eat or, or or die yeah. situation. So they're used to living off. You know, hell, that happened with some of the kids from here. A day and a half. You know, they're not they're not going to be around. But right. that that's that's unreal. 40 days. 40 days. Good for them. That's That was such a good story to hear on the news. Yes, it was. And, and I didn't hear it on the – It's sad that the parents aren't – you know, the parents Very died. sad. Yeah. Very sad. And I think they I think they have figured out that the youngest one, the mom, was actually holding. So she actually – Protected the protected baby. Protected the baby. Yeah. Hey, you know, it's an inherent instinct. You know, it's it's an innate – that's a good example. In yeah. in the event of turmoil, there is no fear when it comes to parents no. protecting their kids. No hesitation. No hesitation. Uh, somebody just posted. I, I'm I'm sure you see it. I'll I'll share it with you. Do you remember? This was back in the I think it was the late '80s. Uh, the dad that was on the payphone, and when they brought the guy that killed his son out, he turned around and. Phew, I almost posted that meme today. <laughs> I saw it. it. Said something about Father some, of the Year or something. Yeah, some fathers are willing to do. Anyway, I saw it, and it showed the guy at the phone booth before he turned around and shot the guy in the head. 100%. I, I you know. I, okay. And if I remember right, he, he got off. He got, he got a, he, yeah, he didn't get in trouble for it. Uh, you blame him? Not one bit. Not one bit? Not one Not one bit. bit. They can't put him in a hole deep enough or I won't get through him. Yeah. And see, that is having some friends um, that have children – that unfortunately they had a family member, you know, do some horrific things to see the turmoil that it has caused in these mm-hmm. kids' lives as they've gone on from eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, up to their teenage years. How, and they're still waiting to go to trial. That's our judicial system for you. It's been years. Mm-hmm. They're still waiting to go to trial, have proof, you know, you know, you know, it's, it's horrible DNA evidence. Right. And how this individual hasn't, taking justice into their own hands i don't know i would believe that i wouldn't but i i i don't know what i would do in that situation that would be a fear that's kind of like we were talking about avoiding yep. certain areas because i know in certain situations what the outcome is going to be and that's a fear of mine as well a fear of mine is getting put in the position that i have to use deadly force that is a fear of mine i don't want to hurt anybody mm-hmm. and i'm not gonna let anybody hurt me or my family and that that's a healthy fear, I think. It is. And if you think about it, our role um, as men and as as leaders of, of a family um, is to protect, right? So we have to have that fear in order to do our jobs correctly. Yeah. Okay? And I'm trying to raise Cyrus right now and Nicholas, you know. We're protectors. We're providers. And that needs to be, that needs to be ingrained in us early. That that is our role, okay? We are providers. We are protectors of our family. And if you don't have that, if you don't have that fear, and where does that fear come from? It comes from experience. Yeah. All right? That fear comes from experience and life lessons. Lord knows we all have them, right? We, we, we've learned them. Some of us a little more than others. Yeah, some of us. <laughs> I had le- I've had to learn the hard way in some right? areas. Yes, I've, I've had to do that too. Yeah. It, you, that old verbiage, you reap what you sow, uh, and if you haven't, if you haven't uh, reaped it, have kids. Yeah. And, and so, like my pop always says, he's like, and, and my dad's buddy Carl. I remember Peyton's growing up, and she would she'd be acting up and doing something. He'd just laugh. He'd be like, "Get you some." Mm-hmm. He's like, "There you go. Yep. There you go. Get you some." Yeah. Um. I uh. I see a lot of the. It's, I, I see a lot of the traits that I had as a child in Cyrus. I don't see them so much in Nicholas. Um. I think that a lot of my mannerisms and traits and personalities got passed along to Cyrus and I'm seeing a lot of that now. So I'm really, really trying to ingrain in him. Like, look, we need to be 
providing protection for people. We we do the good things. We treat people right. right. Yeah. Right. I like that. Yes. It, it, look, I posted something today about this. We aren't here very long. Okay. We are here a, a, a split second in time. Why are you going to treat people bad? I, that's why I don't get that. You know what I mean? Why are you going to be mean? Why are you? Why? I mean, what do you have better to do? Why live your life being mean and and adverse, you know, adversarial with people whenever you don't have to be? And 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 Joe, I think for some people, I think that's. I dated this girl. She wanted to fight all the time over over everything. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, why do you? And then when I hung around her parents and her two brothers and her sister, I realized that's just how y'all were raised. This chaos was their norm. Yeah. So it, yep. it to, to her, that was just the normal. And once I understood that about her, I kicked her to the curb. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no but once I. <laughs> you crazy. You crazy. <laughs> We're going to go take a break real quick. 